Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my 25 most anticipated sci-fi fantasy releases of 2020. So there are a lot of really amazing looking books coming out next year. It was kind of hard to narrow this down, but I went ahead and picked my top 25. This includes adult and young adult in science fiction and fantasy, and I do have this divided up by release date, with the latest books being in September of 2020. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting in January, on the 7th, we've got two releases coming out. First is Lady Hotspur by Tessa Grattan. This is kind of a follow-up to The Queens of Innis Lear, which is one of my all-time favorite books. This one is loosely based on one of Shakespeare's historical plays and returns to that world. I'm really excited for it. I already have a hold on it for the audiobook through my library, and I think I'm person number three, so I will definitely be listening to this one in January. Also releasing on the 7th is Come Tumbling Down by Shadam Wire. This is the latest book in the Wayward Children series that is returning to the world that Jack and Jill come from. I'm really excited for this. I love all of these books and I'm really excited to return to their story arc as well. Then we've got two books coming out on January 14th that I'm really excited about. The first is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. This is their latest book and it is a reimagining of the Dancing Shoes myth. They always have beautifully written prose that explores gender and sexuality and relationships in really interesting ways, so I'm very excited to pick this one up. And then lastly for January is a traditional debut. This is Burn the Dark by S.A. Hunt. I've just been, for whatever reason, really excited about this ever since I heard about it. It is a female-driven supernatural meets Stranger Things about a punk YouTuber on a mission to bring down witches on video. I, it just, it sounds really interesting. Very excited for that one. For February, I've only got two books to talk about. On the 20th, we are getting Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the sequel to Foundry Side, which I read last year and really enjoyed. It's kind of a sci-fi fantasy mashup in a really interesting world, and I just really enjoyed this book. I thought the character work was really good. I liked the action. I liked the twists, and I'm definitely planning on picking this one up. I do have an e-arc of it from NetGalley, so I'll be reading that one. And then on February 25th, we are getting Red Hood by Alana K. Arnold. This is like another dark kind of horror feminist retelling of, I think, Little Red Riding Hood. I really like her work, and even though it's not for everybody, I'm really excited to see what she does with this one. Then March is a very big month. We've got some major releases that are among my most anticipated for the year. The first of which I'm actually in the middle of reading right now because I was lucky enough to get my hands on an arc, thanks to one of my friends. Uh, this is Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. This is her highly anticipated adult debut novel. Um, as I'm filming, this is where I'm at. I am also vlogging reading this, so by the time this goes up, I will be done with it. So far, I'm really loving it. This one is coming out on March 3rd. And it definitely feels much more urban fantasy than anything we've gotten from her in the past. Um, yeah, there will be more to come, but very excited for this. Also coming out on March 3rd is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Definitely looking forward to this one. It is the first in a new series set in Edwardian London in the Shadowhunter universe. Apparently everything is coming out on the 3rd because I have two more books to talk about, big day in March. The first is one that I just finished reading and um, absolutely loved it. This is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. People have been super excited about this. She is the author of the Winner's Curse trilogy, which did really well several years ago, and this is her first book since then. It's the beginning of a brand new duology. This can be read as a standalone, but it is set in the same world as the Winner's Curse trilogy. In my opinion, she has grown a lot as a writer. I think the writing in this is phenomenal. I loved it. It is an LGBT fantasy romance um, set in the same world in a different part of the world featuring different characters. You do not have to have read the Winner's Curse series to pick this up, but if you have read it, then near the end of the book you start to see where there are some connections to characters from the earlier series. 
Uh, but yeah, really excited for this. It's the first in a duology and I can't wait to see where it goes. Really loved it. And then the final book coming out on March 3rd is Havenfall by Sarah Holland. I'm going to put up a picture of the new cover because it is stunning um, and I really, really love it. This sounds super interesting. It is the start of a new YA portal fantasy series set in Colorado. And I just, I don't know what it is, but the cover really appeals to me and I'm excited to check it out. The last March release I want to talk about is coming out on March 26th and this is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin has become one of my all-time favorite sci-fi fantasy authors and The City We Became is an urban fantasy set in New York. i um, really excited to see what she does with this. This is her first full-length novel since the end of the Broken Earth trilogy, which I loved, and uh, yeah, really curious to see where this one goes. It's coming out in March. Moving on to April, I only have two books to talk about for that month. The first one is coming out on April 28th, and this is Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. This is the start of a brand new fantasy series that sounds really interesting. It's about a girl who is a spy and has the ability to steal people's memories, and I think it deals with revenge, and I don't know, it just, the cover looks stunning, it sounds interesting. I like what I've read from Zoraida Cordova in the past, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. And the other April release that I'm looking forward to is coming out on April 30th. This is The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. It is actually set in the same world as the Book of the Ancestor series, but in a different part of it. So we get some more exploration of that world, which I'm super excited about. I think it is a fascinating world. I love what I've read from him so far, and I'm definitely planning on picking this one up when it comes out in April. Then in May we have several releases that I'm pretty excited for. First on May 5th we are getting The Network Effect by Martha Wells. This is the first full-length novel in the Murderbot Diaries series. I've read all of the novellas and absolutely loved them. Murderbot is one of my favorite characters and uh, this is like the big sci-fi release that I'm really excited for. And on May 12th we have Stealing Thunder by Alina Boyden. I'm really excited for this one. It is a debut adult fantasy featuring a trans princess and it is own voices for that representation. It's got dragons and romance and magic and I think it's gonna be hopefully a whole lot of fun. Then on May 19th we are getting one that people are highly anticipating and I'm putting it on this list although I'm a little bit nervous and not quite sure what to expect. This is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is actually a prequel to the Hunger Games series and the first time she's returning to that world since it ended. I am like tentatively excited about this. I'm really curious to see where it goes. The cover is pretty horrible. Like the cover is really ugly, which is unfortunate, but I am curious to read the book and see kind of where it goes. And then finally on May 26th, we are getting a fantasy debut that I'm really excited about. The premise sounds really fascinating. This is The Gilded Ones by Naima Forna. I think this is going to be one a lot of people are going to be talking about. It's calling it a bold and immersive West African inspired feminist fantasy series, great for fans of Children of Blood and Bone and Black Panther. It's set in a world where 16 year olds have a ceremony to show the color of their blood and if they have red blood they stay with their family in their community but if they have gold blood it's considered the color of impurity. They face consequences worse than death. But it follows a 16 year old girl who has the choice to either stay in her village and face her fate or leave and become a warrior in the Emperor's army. I am really excited for this one. Um, it sounds amazing. Then in June we have five books coming that I'm really excited for. First up on June 2nd we are getting Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the follow-up to Gideon the Ninth, which I absolutely loved. Um, so we've got more lesbian necromancers in space. Harrow Hark is the main character in book two and I'm really excited to see more in the world and see where the story goes. Also coming out on June 2nd is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This is a debut novel that's being pitched as Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera and I've heard really Really great things about it before. I will put a picture here so you can see what the finished cover looks like, but again this one's coming out in June. Then on June 9th we're getting The Damned by Renee Adier. This is the sequel to The Beautiful, which I 
loved. I know it wasn't quite what everybody was expecting. It was kind of pitched as more of a paranormal romance heavy on the vampires. And I think what we got more of was a historical mystery, but I still really loved it. I loved the world and the lush writing and the way that she kind of wove in new mythology with vampires and other things. Um, very excited to see where it goes in book two, so I will for sure be picking this one up. On June 23rd, we're getting what is I think another debut novel. This is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee, and this one kind of caught me right away with what they said about it. It says it's an epic, unrelenting tale of destiny and sisterhood, perfect for fans of Naomi Novik and Susan Dennard. I love both of them, and Susan is one of my favorite authors. I'm really excited to see where this one goes. It follows a girl who is a spy for the queen and is somehow able to raise her best friend from the dead. This one definitely sounds interesting. And lastly, on June 30th, we're getting Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the third and final book in the David Bad trilogy. I have really loved the first two books in the series and I'm definitely going to be picking up the third one. Currently I don't have any books on this list for July. In August I've got one that I'm excited for. This is Return of the Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. This is the final book in the Queen's Thief series. I've loved all of these books. I think we were supposed to get this one in 2019 but it got pushed back so now it looks like we're getting this August 25th if all goes well and I'm sure it's going to be a good one. All of her books are just really fantastic. And then finally in September I've got two books to share that I'm excited for. The first one is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin. This is the follow-up to Serpent and Dove which was my favorite YA fantasy romance of 2019. I'm really excited to see where she goes in book two. I'm hoping that we get another romance because that was what I really loved about book one. I would probably be a little disappointed if it turns into being more of just like a general YA fantasy story but if we get another like YA new adult fantasy romance from her, I would be very excited about that. So we'll we'll see. I'm definitely looking to give that one a shot. And then lastly, on September 3rd, we should be getting Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. I know he's currently working on it. This is the beginning of a new series that is going to be a very dark and bloody political series that brings back vampires. And uh, I think it's probably going to be a good time. So there you have it. Those are my 25 most anticipated sci-fi fantasy releases for 2020. There are definitely others I'm interested in and excited to pick up, but uh, those kind of made the top of my list. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on the books that I talked about. Did I talk about some of your favorites that you're excited for, or ones you didn't know about? Are there others that you would have put on this list that I left off? Let me know in the comments down below. And for your question of the day, tell me one of your most anticipated sci-fi fantasy releases for 2020. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.